darkness you're shining Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's no one like you The top of a voice, let's sing this out Oh, I got a scream And if our God is for us, who can be against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Nothing can stand against, Father. What can stand against? Is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger. Come on, sing this out. Let's praise Him this morning. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, Come on, lift His name, lift His name. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, He's our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. 
He was our only way and he still is our only way. Amen. Amen. So we're going to declare that this morning that Jesus is my only way. You know, many times I've seen people, you know, I've seen people treating Jesus as their last resort. Amen. Jesus is their last option. But let me tell you this morning, Jesus is our only option. It's, it's just that we realize it very late. That's, that, that's a reality. We, we, we don't realize it in the initial stages. And last album, we realize that, yes, Jesus is the way. But let me tell you, let's, let's shift that. And let's declare that Jesus is my only way. Amen? Just turn to your neighbor and say, He is my only way. He is my only option this morning. Amen.
and all that is within me, everything that I have this morning. Just lift your praises before the next song. Come on. Let me hear some voices this morning. Bless his holy name. Say, Jesus, we love you. We lift your name about every other name this morning, Father. We bless you.
glorious name, Father. Oh, we bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Father. We bless your name, God.
God, you're good. Oh, Father, you're so good. Thank you, Jesus, that you reign in our lives, Father. Lord, and when we are unfaithful, Lord, and we are bad, Lord, you're so good, Father. Your love is so good, Father, Lord. Your faithful love endures forever, Jesus. We praise your name, Father, Lord. We praise your holy name, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. You are the king of my heart. You're so good, Jesus. You're so good, Father. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, holy name. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Shakara Bahaturi Am Sukora Bashala Rahatura Kasha Pasperi Yante Shere Ketiri Am Soko Shate Hesperi Yako Shate Tere Liriyan to Kosoro Kotiri Am Shukora Basperi Yante Am Suko. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for moving in our midst, Father. Come on, if you feel His presence, do something today. This not be silent. Come on, respond to him. Let's lift our voices and start speaking in tongues this morning. His presence is so overwhelming this morning. He's all around this place. Yeah. Lord Holy Spirit, Lord Holy Spirit, we come before you and we bow ourselves before your presence, Lord. We know that we are standing before the consuming fire. We stand in reverence and we stand in awe in your presence, God. We understand the value of your presence that is moving in this place, Lord. We don't want to take it for granted, God. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Church, you need to realize that the most precious thing in our lives is the presence of Jesus. Every time we come together, when he shows up, that is the most valuable thing that we hold on to our lives. So let's say, Lord, thank you for your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you can just hold your neighbor's hand as we're going to pray this morning. It's not, it's not a person who's going to pray. It's the church who's going to pray. And I, I want everybody to just pray this morning. Just like take 20 seconds to just open your mouths and start speaking in tongues this morning. Come on, church, lift your voices. Let the voice of the church, let the voice of the church, the voice of the body of the Christ, the voice of authority rise in this place this morning. We've been praying for a movement of God and that is going to happen, church. It is happening already. The spiritual atmosphere is changing. If you truly realize that, just respond to him this morning. Lord, we prophesy over dryness in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have promised us streams of living water. And we speak that out into this atmosphere this morning, Father. We prophesy over the dry bones, Father. In the name of Jesus, let dry bones come to life. Let every dryness be removed in the name of Jesus. And we prophesy over everything, Father. We prophesy over these empty chairs. Let there be life. Let there be life. Let there be, let there be people coming into the church in the name of Jesus, God. We cry out for the city, Father. We cry out for the nation, Lord. We cry out for the nations of the world, Lord Jesus. Let us be part of this great moment that is happening globally, Lord Jesus. Come on, church, let's pray for our nation. This is, we, are, we are here in a very significant time in our nation. We're going to decide the next government. And the word says the government shall be upon his shoulders. I want the church to lift your voice and start praying for India. Let the will of God be done in India as it is in heaven. Yes, Father. Come on, church. Just pray for your, just pray for your nation. Let's pray for the coming elections. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we speak out. That let your will be done as it is in heaven, in India, Father. 
let your will be done father lord we pray for the coming elections lord jesus in the name of jesus we pray and we declare that nothing apart from the will of god will happen in this nation father we take authority we realize a call to pray for this nation father and we speak out your will into this nation god whatever that is father we are ready to receive it father a new form of government that we've never seen before john let the churches grow let the churches be blessed let nothing stop it father as we heard last week if this is from god nothing can stop it we believe it lord jesus god thank you jesus and we pray for each other this morning father let every sick person in this room be healed in the name of jesus let every broken heart be restored in the name of jesus let every broken relationships be restored in the name of jesus father lord we pray we speak mental physical financial health father god we speak prosperity over jobs lord jesus we speak health over families father we speak health and prosperity over everything that we are involved in father we pray for education we pray for your your blessing and your prosperity over your children god we are your children and co-heirs of christ father we receive all our blessings in the name of jesus god thank you jesus for bringing us together this morning we pray for the entire service whatever is happening this morning let it be let it be under your control holy spirit we thank you jesus for the word that's going to come forth and the minister of god whom you're going to use this morning father speak to us through your word father let it penetrate through our hearts we give you all glory father in jesus name we pray amen, amen. let's all be seated good morning church Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you're all happy this morning. Uh, if you don't mind people sitting in the back, if you can just fill these empty chairs in the front and uh, just, yeah. There are, two, there, there are two chairs in the second row, so if, if, you, if you don't mind, if you can just come forward and thank you so much. Thank you so much for your cooperation. God bless you. It, <laughs> It is so good to see you all together, amen? Especially welcome, once again, I would like to welcome all our newcomers and people that have come from after, after some, some while now. And uh, especially I would like to welcome all our newcomers as we take the offerings. Uh, before we take the offerings, I'd ju just like to uh, invite all our, just, just all our newcomers, if you can just stand up. We're not going to make you do anything, just want to see you and welcome you, come on. Please stand up so that we can see you and welcome you. Let's put our hands together and welcome these beautiful people into our church. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you and have a blessed day. Thank you. And all our members, all our church members, welcome once again. Are you happy? Yeah? God bless you. Now we can take the offerings. Let's all, let's all prepare um, to worship God with what we can give Him. Amen. Worship is all about giving. Because he gave us everything. He gave us the best. Let's give him the best this morning. Now, I don't want to waste time. Uh, we've been going through an amazing time, especially as an English church. Amen. As, an Eng as the English congregation, uh, God has been doing some amazing things that we've never seen before. Amen. And uh, as a family, I, I, I really encourage all of you all to be a part of that. Amen. Don't stand out. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying don't be left out because nobody is left out here. We all love each other. Don't stand out of the, of the, of the community, of the, of the family. Especially I would like to welcome my sister Betsy this morning. Uh, she, she's working in Nagpur. We all know uh, Saji uncle and Petiani. They're my uncle and auntie. And uh, their son Jomon. We call, him, we call him Jomon. Jomon's wife Betsy is here with us. Betsy, can you please stand up so that everybody can see you. Let's put our hands together and welcome Betsy to our church once again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Uh, we've been praying for a movement. Amen. And God is already doing that. How many, how many of you remember the last week's prophecy? Not a message. It was not a message. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that's going to happen in our church? Amen. It's already happening. And all God asked us to do is pray. Amen. Amen. Pray until something happens. Amen. That's what the disciples did in, in, in Jerusalem. They waited they waited in prayer. So we are waiting for the move of God, which is already happening globally. We want that to come into Petra Church and fill this place. Amen. How many of you believe that by the end of this year, the whole place is going to be filled? That's it, church. 
Can I hear a better amen to that? Amen. amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Uh, and I'd just like to remind you about the prayer that is happening every morning and evening, 5 to 6 in the morning and 7 to 8 in the evening. We, we call it Kislev to Nissan. It's a 120 days prayer that is happening in our church and I highly encourage all our English congregation members to be a part of that. It is a great blessing. We've been having amazing experience. People, uh, you know, we, it's, it's, it's beyond words. So please come and experience that and thank you so much for everything. We had deeper yesterday. We, every uh, Second and fourth Saturdays, we have our life group happening in different places. So I would like to encourage all of you all to be a part of that. Basically, what I'm trying to say is be a part of this community. That's very important. Amen. Let's not be only Sunday believers. Just be a part of the community. Be there for each other and pray for each other. God bless you and have a blessed week. Not much of announcements this week. So how many of you here and excited to hear from the word of God? Amen. Especially, uh, just I forgot to mention, uh, how many of you remember Ashley's engagement? Ashley is engaged now, and Ashley's uh, fiance goes to a church in Trivandrum called the Freedom Ministries, and uh, we have an amazing pastor there, and his son is here with us, Johan, uh, Johan is his name, and he came with his friends today. We, we would just like to specially welcome you, Johan. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of the church. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's welcome our pastor to the stage as he's going to deliver the word of God. Let's put our hands together, church, as our pastor is going to come to the stage and deliver the word of God. Thank you so much. Good morning. Last Sunday, I was with uh, Pastor Bijit Philip, Johan's father, Freedom Ministries in uh, Toronto. So it's such a huge church with uh, four services, um, with a huge crowd. It's not a crowd, it's the disciples. <laughs> so thank you, Johan, for your presence with your friends. May the Lord bless you. Um, today I just want to uh, share about, uh, no, no, f the last few days, a thought was, you know, it was uh, blowing in my heart about, you know, um, but I have changed the um, title of the message because um, you know, to attract you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So today my message is before your miracle. Amen. Before your miracle. Hallelujah. Anigrihatin munba. What's happening before your miracles? What should happen before your miracle? Hallelujah. Amen. So I, I, I don't have a verse to, no. To, to read for that message. Um, we are expecting miracles in our lives always. We have so many promises in our lives through the prophetic word, from reading the word of God in the Bible, maybe from dreams and visions. We have so many promises. Praise God. But before ful fulfilling your promises, there are certain things according to the Holy Scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to share about before the miracle. We will just read uh, Luke 1, 34 and 35. And Mary said to the angel, yeah. how will this be since I am a virgin? Mm. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Yeah. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Yeah. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Praise the Lord. So I just want to teach you about the life of Jesus, the life of the people of God. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was born by the Spirit of God. Okay, that's what the word says. The word says in Luke chapter 1 verse 34 and 35, And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I'm a virgin? How can I conceive a child? Without having relationship with a man. She says, I never knew a man. How can it be? That's true. Praise the Lord. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was born by the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God came over Mary, she got conceived. 
praise the lord the seed was the word praise the lord the seed was the word that's how he came into this world hallelujah and what about you and me let's come to john chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 jesus answered yeah truly truly i say to you mm. unless one is born of water and the spirit mm. he cannot enter the kingdom of god yeah that which is born of flesh is flesh mm. and that which is born of spirit is praise spirit. the lord when the pharisee nicodemus he came to jesus in a night and said how can i enter into the kingdom of god and it was like a short treatment you must be born again praise the lord you must be born again then he asked how can it be and jesus answered truly truly i say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit jesus was born by the spirit of god praise the lord and we came into this world through the relationship of our father and mother that's a biographical a biological growth praise the lord and jesus says you must be born again not from the flesh from the spirit praise the lord when we get saved when i got saved in 87 october 26th in the night the holy spirit came over me and i opened my heart i received him praise god when i received the holy spirit he came into my heart he came into my life and according to the word of god theologically i got saved i am born again praise the lord as jesus born into this world hallelujah i am born again hallelujah and the second thing i'm talking about before your blessing what should happen okay the second thing is luke 240 and the child grew and became strong mm-hmm. filled with wisdom and mm. the favor of god was upon him praise the lord after the birth what should happen you should grow praise the lord you should grow the word of god says luke chapter 2 verse 40 says and the child grew and became strong okay filled with wisdom and the favor of god was upon him Praise the Lord. He grew and he became strong and he was filled with the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And what about you? What the scripture says about you? Again we'll read one more verse 2:52. Look. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature. Yes. And in favor with God and yeah. man. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Praise the Lord. As a child of God you should increase your wisdom. Praise the Lord. In stature and in favor with God and man. You can just evaluate your life. Am I growing in the Lord? Am I growing in the word? Am I growing in the spirit? Am I receiving the divine wisdom? Is there any increase of wisdom in my life? Praise the Lord. Can I measure things in my life? And what's my criteria of knowing things? What's my measuring rod about knowing things? how can i discern a spiritually when you receive the wisdom of god when you increase the wisdom of god how can you increase your wisdom 
through reading the word of God, meditating on it, and walking with Jesus every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God says about Jesus, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And what about you? What the word says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. So that we may no longer be children, mm -hmm. tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by yes. every wind of doctrine, mm -hmm. by human cunning, by craftiness yes. and deceitful schemes. Mm -hmm. Rather, speaking the truth in love, mm. we are to grow up in every way into him mm. who is ahead into Christ. That's what the verse says. The verse says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather speaking the truth and love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Praise the Lord. The head is very huge. That is Jesus Christ. You can see some kind of, you know, um, I don't know what is the name, caricature. Yeah. Big head and small body. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is a huge head. If you're not growing, you know, you can just imagine. It's funny. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. What is the truth? Truth is the word of God. This is the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what is the uh, mission statement of our church? Make every man perfect in Christ through the uncompromised preaching and teaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You should grow in the Lord. After the birth, you should grow. That's what the word says. Even biologically, that's the, that's the truth, you know. Yes. Okay, then. The next thing. Acts chapter, uh, no, 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 yes. Okay, then uh, the third thing is Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized, mm -hmm. and when Jesus was also being baptized and was praying, mm. the heavens were opened, and mm. the Holy Spirit descended on him in mm -hmm. bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. Mm. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Okay, so you, you need to have a baptism in the water. Jesus took his baptism in the age of 30. Praise the Lord. It happened in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. It was a repent, repentance baptism. It was for the repentance of sins. When did he commit any sin as he was living in this world? He took the baptism for sinners. And the other people were prostitutes and tax collectors and criminals. I think he was in the queue. Maybe in front of there was a, there was a um, prostitute. The back said there was a tax collector. And the next, there was a criminal. He was standing in the queue. Praise the Lord. Can you just imagine in the age of 30, he took baptism in the water. The sinner's baptism. Praise the Lord. And John the Baptist asked, are you coming to me to be baptized? No, I won't do that. I want to be baptized by you. Why you are you coming to me? Praise the Lord. And we know the story. Hallelujah. And he took the baptism. Praise the Lord. So you need baptism in the water. Okay? And now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, 
and was praying. After baptism, he prayed. That is amazing. Did you pray after your baptism? In the baptism pond? I didn't do that. I didn't know this verse. Hallelujah. After baptism, he came out of the water. He prayed, Father. That's a beautiful picture. How many of you have prayed after your baptism in the pond? In the pool? I didn't do that. But I, went, I never knew that there's a, there was a verse in the Bible like that. Hallelujah. Amen. He prayed. After baptism, you know, you know, we just coming out of the water. Like this. Hallelujah. After coming out of water, he just prayed. Father. And the word of God says, when he prayed, and he was praying, the heavens were opened. When he prayed in the pool, the heavens were opened. Amen. It can happen in your life. This is happening before the miracle, okay? The heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. You need to have the dissension of the Holy Spirit before having your miracle, before having your promise fulfilled. The dissension of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. It happened in the river Jordan. After taking baptism, when he was praying to God, Father, Father, this is your righteousness. Even though I have never committed a sin, I am just obeying your laws. I am just obeying your commandments, Father. I don't know what he prayed, but I think maybe this is his prayer. Father, I just obeyed your statutes. I just obeyed your ordinances. I just obeyed your commandment, even though I have never committed a sin. A baptism for the sinners. Hallelujah. When he prayed, the word of God says, the heavens were open. Not the heaven, heavens. Praise the Lord. That's what the verse says. The heavens were open. You can just see the, see the verse. When he was praying, the heavens, not the heaven, heavens were open. That is so marvelous. Hallelujah. The heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Before having your promises fulfilled, before having your miracles, you need to have the dissension of the Holy Spirit upon you. I can connect that in Acts 1.8. Yes. But you will receive power when yeah. the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Yeah, to, to fulfill your promise, you need the heavenly power. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You can receive blessing with your own strength. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Anything can happen in your life with the spirit of the Lord. When he comes, you can expect great and mighty things. So you need the dissension of the Holy Spirit upon you. Yes, read money. And you will be my witnesses yeah, in yeah. Jerusalem, yeah. in all Judea and Samaria, yeah. and to the ends of the earth. The word of God says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You need to have this kind of an experience in your life. The dissension of the Holy Spirit. You have to wait for that. So eagerly. 
you need to have a thirst and hunger for the Holy Spirit. That's an other measure. That's an other level. That's an other realm. You can grow. Spiritual life is, you know, <laughs> there are many, 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 you know, uh, compartments. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Praise the Lord. After baptism, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus Christ. And God clothed him with the heavenly power. Even you can have the same thing. Hallelujah. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If you receive this power, you can travel around the world. It doesn't mean that you should be a missionary or a pastor. You can do your business. You can go for your job with this vision, with this mission. If you're working in a hospital, if you're working in an office, if you're working in an IT company, that is your mission field. You are a missionary in your office. You're a missionary in your hospital. You're a missionary in the office. You're a missionary in your college. You're a missionary in the school. You are a missionary. Because the missionary is a man or a woman with a mission. God has entrusted on you some kind of a mission. Hallelujah. I cannot come into the eyes, you know, ICU to share the gospel. But a doctor can do, a nurse can do that. Praise the Lord. We have no entrance into an ICU. There are so many dying patients. You can just give them Jesus Christ. That is your mission field. ICU is your mission field. The hospital is your mission field. The college is your mission field. Your IT company is the mission field. Your business is your mission field. Your school and the college is the mission field. That's why God is clothing you with the power of the Holy Spirit. You will be my witness. When you, when you, when you try to become a witness in Jerusalem, your family, with your family, with your friends, your colleagues, God will send you to now other stations, other cities, other kingdoms, other nations. The word of God says, you will go into the ends of the earth. You shall be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the next thing is Luke chapter 4 verse one, two. What's happening before your, what should happen before your miracle? And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. returned from the Jordan mm. and was led by the Spirit in mm. the wilderness for mm. 40 days, yeah. being tempted by the devil, mm. and he ate nothing during those days. Mm. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Praise the Lord. The word of God says, Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2 says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. In the wilderness. This is something very hard. Praise the Lord. The word of God says. And Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So. What would be our expectation after the full of the Holy Spirit? Oh, now is the time to fulfill my promises, fulfill my blessings. This is the time to receive all my blessings. No way. No way. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Even his looks, praise the Lord, even his saliva, a touch, even the shadow, even his cloth was filled by the power of God. But before the miracles, he had to go through the wilderness experience. That is the hardest part in everybody's life. 
Hallelujah. Amen. We like to receive prosperity, blessings, this and that, you know. But you have to go through this wilderness experience. The word of God says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when he were ended, he was hungry. The Holy Spirit will lead you into a wilderness. That means isolated, lonely, as if you're rejected. There is none with you. Nobody's there to help you. Nobody's there to talk with. No fellowship, nothing. You are alone in the wilderness. Have you ever experienced such? Praise the Lord. If you're going through a wilderness experience, you are coming very near to your promises. Amen. But this is the hardest place in the Christian life. Praise the Lord. And he was so tempted by devil. He asked, I know you are very hungry after 40 days fasting. Now you receive the power of God. This is the time to perform a wonderful miracle. Why can't you change the stone into bread? <laughs> See, the devil is challenging. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he showed all the glory of the world. Just worship me. I can give all this. Hallelujah. So many people think, you know, the Lulu man is a very, very rich man. There are so many rich people, Ambani, Kimbani, and all those people. They are not worshiping Jesus Christ. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't worship Jesus. Praise the Lord. And you can see any rich people in Cochin, they are not, uh, you know, full, full gospel people. They are not Pentecostal people. They are not the people who are coming to, like, you know, our church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you want to be a filthy rich man, you can just worship Satan. He can give you everything. That's why so many people are going to the Satanic church. For black mass. Hallelujah. The high profile people, film stars and business people, you know, high profile people. And they are getting everything. Devil said, Worship me. And he showed all the glory of the world. Just worship me. I can just give up everything. Hallelujah. You know, I don't want to explain all those things. And again, he challenged, why can't he jump from the top of the temple? And the angel will protect you. That's what the word says in Psalms 91. Praise the Lord. Sometimes these kind of people may come to you and caught verses from the Bible. Sister, this is what the word says. Brother, this is what the word says. No, Roy Pass never preached this ad. He doesn't know anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He will quote many verses from the Bible. He can show a, a spiritual, you know, nature. Very godly. The walking, you know, the talking, everything, you know. Praise the Lord. But you should have a spirit of discerning whether it's from the Lord or from Satan. Hallelujah. You will be tempted. You will be tested before receiving your miracles. I will just show you one verse about the Old Testament people from um, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 through 19. Yeah. Arrest for the people of God. Mm. 
Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, mm. today if you hear his voice, yeah. do not harden your hearts as mm -hmm. in the rebellion. Yeah. On the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and mm. saw my works for 40 mm. years. Mm. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go straight in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. They shall not enter into my rest. No, it's okay. Man. Take care, my brothers. Yes, yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the word of God says, therefore, the Holy Spirit says, it's talking, it's talking about the Old Testament people, Israel. Okay? What happened in their life? Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. In the life of the people of Israel, God used the same, same, same thing. Same principle. They were in the bondage of Egypt. Moses, the redeemer, came into this um, city. He redeemed them from the bondage. They were coming, they, they, they were baptized in the water, Red Sea, and the cloud. And they entered into the wilderness, like Jesus. Jesus, after baptism, and the Holy Spirit baptism, it was in the Jordan. He came into the wilderness. The same thing, Israel came into the wilderness. And God gave them everything. Heavenly manna, quail, all those things. Water from rock. Everything. Supernatural supply. Everything was supernatural. But you know what was the problem with the people? They hardened their heart. That's my message. Actually, my title was, Do Not Harden Your Heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. The day of testing in the wilderness. Amen. They had to go through the wilderness testing. Even Jesus has gone through the wilderness test. And he triumphed victoriously. And we, the church, the people of God, have to go the same experience. Even though you can see, in our nature you see, there are so many people, you know, they, they are with hard hearts. They won't hear anything. They won't believe anything. They're always, you know, like rebellious. They think what I'm thinking is right. What I'm doing is right. What I'm saying is right. This is a deception of the devil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Same experience. We are also going the, the same experience. Wilderness. God will test you in the wilderness experience. This is, the main, this is the main place of failures of many people. Do not harden your hearts in, in, as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. Where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. I said, swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care. So now the exhortation to the New Testament church for, uh, for us. Okay? So the author of Hebrews using the, the Old Testament uh, example, illustration, and he is giving an exhortation to the New Testament people. So he says, take care, brothers, lest there be any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day as long as it's called today. You understand? Exhort each other. That's your responsibility. Hallelujah. No, you are not here to criticize the people. Ah, see? See how he... No. See? How is she? You can say many things. You're not supposed here to criticize people, to exhort, to encourage the people. Praise the Lord. 
Even though there, is, there, there are corrections in my message, no, it's an exhortation. It's an encouraging you to receive your promises, to receive your blessings in your life. Do not harden your heart, my dear brothers and sisters, today, this morning. I just want to exhort you. Yes, today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Are you following me? Yes. For we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked by 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? whose bodies fell into the wilderness, and to whom did the swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Praise the Lord. Even though they came out of the bondage of Egypt by the Redeemer Moses, even though they got baptized in the water and in the spirit even though they walked in the wilderness even though they have been supplied all the needs yes that's what the word says my God shall supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in heaven by Christ Jesus Philippians 4 19 it says they've been supplied every need God supplied everything supernaturally. Praise the Lord. But they lost their promise. Hallelujah. You know why? They hardened their hearts. The deceitfulness of sin. That's what the verse says. And, and he asked many questions. The author asked many questions. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked by 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. And what about Jesus? What about Jesus and the wilderness experience and the after effect? We will just read Luke chapter 4 verse 1 through 14. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, yeah. returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, mm. being tempted by the devil. Mm. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Mm. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, if command If you are the, the Son of God, it's a challenge. If you are the born again man, if you are the born again Girl, if you're the Pentecostal man, if you're a Pentecostal pastor, people are challenging. People will challenge you from your family, from the workplace. You can expect from anywhere. People will challenge you. He is challenging Jesus. If you're the son of the living God. If you are the son of God, mm. command this stone to become bread. Mm. And Jesus answered him, mm. it is written, mm. man shall not live by bread alone. Yes, Jesus is using the holy scripture. When devil try to attack you, when devil try to tempt you, you should have the word of God in your mouth, not in your heart. Use the word of God. Hallelujah. So the word of God is power. The word of God says in the beginning there was word and the word was with God and the word was God. When you speak out the word, you're speaking out the out God. The, the God, God is going through your mouth. You can apply God anywhere and everywhere through speaking the word of God. Because it, it, it gives you authority. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in mm. a moment of time. Mm. 
and said to him, uh. to you I will give all this authority yes. and their glory, yes. for it has been delivered to me. It has been delivered to me. I can give it to you. Just worship me. That's all. You just worship me. I can give everything, all the glory of this world. I can, the kingdoms and authorities, everything. I can give it to you. Hallelujah. You can see all the rulers of the world, rulers of the nations. Are they worship Jesus? Are they worshiping Jesus? Maybe very few. Very few, maybe less than one percent. Hallelujah. But they are ruling the world. They are ruling the nations. Hallelujah. The word of God says, devil says, I can give you authority over nations, over kingdoms if you worship me. You understand? Yes. Read. And Jesus answered him, mm. it is written, mm. you shall worship the Lord your God mm. and him only shall you serve. Mm. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, mm. if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, challenging, yeah. Throw yourself down from here. Yeah. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to yes. guard you. Okay. Amen. Yeah, read. On their hands, they will bear you up, mm. lest, your, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Mm. And Jesus answered him, mm. it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Mm. And when the devil had ended every temptation, mm. he departed from him mm. until an opportune time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You should not put the Lord your God to test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Jesus begins his ministry and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and a report about him went out through the surrounding country. Here, the promises you can see. Here the miracles are happening. After, after the wilderness experience, the first sign was Cana. He changed the water into wine. He touched the people, healed the wounded, healed the sick people, healed the lepers, cast out demons from many people. You can see miracles and promises of God after the, after the temptation in the wilderness. You have the same way. You have to go through the same path, same way. The people of Israel went through the same way, even Jesus. It was 40 years for Israel, but Jesus no, represented one day for one year. And you and me, we have the same way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the message is, do not harden your heart. When you have a wilderness, when you experience a wilderness experience, when you are isolated, when you are rejected by many people, when you face many negative things from the family, from the workplace, even from the church. You should understand, that is a test. And how do you respond? How do you react? You can harden your heart. That's, the one, that's one way you can kneel down before the Lord and cry. You will be blessed. You're the only person who could lose your blessings. Even you, you cannot blame devil. You are the only person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are two options. One is you can harden your heart. When you get the corrections, when you get an exhortations, when you get a rebuke, when you are being tempted by the devil, when the devil is using people to tempt you, you can harden your heart. That's, that's one way. Number two, you can kneel down before the Lord. You can rebuke the devil. You can stand against the schemes of the devil. And you can rebuke him in the name of Jesus. I command you, flee! No way in my life. You can do that. You can kneel before the Lord. Lord, let your will be done in my life. Hallelujah. 
and what's your choice today this morning do you want to harden your heart or you want to walk in the ways of god or do you want to be corrected by god do you want to be rebuked by the lord do you want to be exhorted by god that is your choice praise the lord that's your choice you can harden your heart go away from the lord and you can lose your promises you can humble yourself kneel before the lord cry father i come with my life into your hands i want to walk in your ways i want all the promises i want all your blessings you can see blessings after blessings after this children christmas in the life of jesus christ that will happen in your life you're called to be blessed to be a blessing for the nations let's all stand on our feet roka labaka rabi andra ga shekha na rakiva ho we bless you bless you bless you roka laka rika baba ba shakara makura thank you holy spirit thank you holy lord thank you jesus let's close our eyes and look into heaven as jesus stood in the water of the river jordan after the baptism he prayed to god father i want to walk in your ways I want to obey your statutes and ordinances. Lord, I want to be a useful instrument in the hands of my father. I want to be a blessing to bless the people, to bless the nations, to bless the families. But I'm called to be blessed to be a blessing for the people, for the families. for the villages and nations to the uttermost part of the world you have the choice either you can harden your heart or you can humble yourself father change my heart change my heart lord i have gone as so many times i want to come before you i want to walk in your ways I don't want to harden my heart so father can you just pray by singing a song all it takes is one moment and just one touch from you put aside all Cause I came for you I came for you I need you more than ever It's nothing else satisfies me All my life I surrender Cause I live for you
I am ready for you. I am ready for you. Jesus, take me deeper. Jesus, take me deeper. Cause I came for you. Father, help me not to harden our hearts before. Lord, give us a heart with flesh to write your scripture on that, oh Father. Today this morning, Lord, let's dedicate. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the wonderful morning that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the word that is poured upon us, oh Father not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God, Father. 
Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have touched every heart in this place, oh Father. Lord, let the hardened hearts be melted, Lord. Lord, let them melt and see the power of God in their life, oh Lord Jesus. Father, let them know that, Lord, there is no other God who can rescue, who can protect them, who can provide them like you, oh my El Shaddai, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, oh Lord Jesus, that there'll be a movement of the Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, that like never before, Lord. Lord, I pray, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, as they move into the new week, oh Father, that every day will be a supernatural encounter with you, Father. Lord, I bless your holy name, Lord Jesus. We are not worthy, Lord, to receive your Holy Spirit, Lord. Help us to have that intimate relationship with thy Holy Spirit, Lord. And help us to know that, Lord, that you will provide abundantly more than what we seek, more than we ever think about, Lord Jesus. Let the power of the Almighty God rest upon our life, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, let your people be delivered in every way, O oh Father. Let them seek your face daily, O oh Father, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you and give you glory, honor, and praise in the mighty name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you. May the Lord bless you, especially um, the Vargis, also from uh, Freedom uh, Ministries. Is here. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, brother, for your presence. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Bless your blessings. May the love of the Father and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all forever and ever. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a blessed week.